Now we're going to be building our dense point cloud. One thing we should probably do, you're going to see we have a big bounding box here. Let's go ahead and resize that bounding box. So right here next to our lasso selection is a resize region and a rotate region. So we're going to go ahead and resize this region here. And it uh, feels like I'm back in moto navigation here. So let's go ahead and drag these points here. And we're just going to encapsulate our object within this bounding box. We've already deleted the point cloud data, so I'm not sure how useful this will really be, but it'll, if it does any sort of focus, I guess that's a good thing. There we go. So we got a nice little container around our object. So let's go back into navigation here. And we'll go ahead and center our object here with our middle mouse button here. There we go. So we got our bounding box nice and sized to her. So let's go ahead and build that dense point cloud. So let's go back up to workflow. We've already aligned the photo. So now we're going to build our dense point cloud. Under quality, you're going to spend a lot of time waiting around for ultra high. High, in my experience, is usually good enough. If you do want to export something just for placement or just for a lower res version of your object, choose medium and low. Um, and then you can just go ahead and once you've created the dense point cloud, you can create your mesh and then export that mesh. And then you can go back into your build dense point cloud and choose high. So you can do multiple things to kind of get the results that you want. Uh, another thing you can do is you can build a high dense cloud or a high quality dense cloud, convert that to geo and then decimate that geo within here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is go ahead and keep the quality on high. Um, under depth filtering, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on the default, which I think is aggressive and then hit OK. And now if we did have our images masked, it would completely disregard any of those mass points while it's creating the point clouds. But in this case, we've just deleted those points and we've constrained our bounding box to a smaller size. Alrighty, that took about three and a half minutes. And again, one of those really computationally expensive uh, operations, but three and a half minutes isn't too bad to generate a dense point cloud. In order to see this dense point cloud, right now all we see right here is the what we have selected, which is our sparse point cloud. Let's go ahead and click that dense point cloud. And ah, there we go. So our point cloud is much more dense. In fact, if you toggle between here, you're going to see here's a few points and here's a lot of points. So this is what's going to accurately start projecting our uh, geometry when we start building our mesh. You're going to see we have some a few floating points in here. We can go ahead and get rid of those stragglers again just with our selection here. And again, if you want to delete any areas of this box, we can go ahead and go around and start dragging over those. There we go. Now, of course, a lot of this cleanup work we can do in an external application later, but while we're in here, we might as well clean it up just a little bit. So here's our dense point cloud looking pretty good. No major holes other than the one at the bottom, which is okay. Now, if we wanted to, what we could have done is flip this object upside down. We could have loaded those bottom photos in as another chunk, process those, and then align them later. Uh, but I think just closing that hole off will be fine. We don't need to shoot the bottom of this particular object. But if you were shooting a rock, that would be something you would do is just have two chunks in here with imported photos into each chunk and then aligning them within Photoscan.